Hey guys, Timmy D with Drone Mapping Tools, your one source for drones, LiDAR, survey equipment, and all things mapping. In today's video, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to take the Stonex 980, and it could go for any of the Stonex units, and set it up on a free Intrup RTK setup. Now, we're going to use the Emlid Caster setup. Emlid Caster is free and it is phenomenal. You could also do the same thing on rtktogo.com. In today's scenario, I have the Stonex 980 Plus for the base unit. I have a Emlid RS3 for a rover and then we'll also be using the DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise as a rover as well. So I'm going to show you how to set this thing up and occupy. We're occupying a, a control point. You could either set a control point using like a state RTK service, but in most cases you're going out to a job site, you're going to occupy control, so we need to occupy that point as the base point and then now send back out interrupt corrections on a online RTK service. This is absolutely free. There are companies that charge you an annual fee just to be able to do RTK interrupt services. It's crazy right? But the Stonex units, it's free of charge. On the Emlid units, it's free of charge. All you need is an RTK interrupt service. And again, you can do that with the Emlid caster service, and you can also do it on rtktogo.com. So today we're going to show the Emlid caster service, because a lot of guys mix and match equipment. You may have a pair of Emlid RS3 units. You may only have one Emlid RS3 unit, or an RS2 Plus, you name it, you've got an Emlid unit. Then you also have some other units like the Stonex 980 or the Stonex 900. So it doesn't matter, you can mix and match, it's all the same. So I have the Stonex tablet, this is the, uh, the S80 tablet, very, very good tablet. Man, it's awesome. And for, for the Stonex units, you run Cube A, and Cube A is very good uh, software for doing your field work. So I'm going to open this up, and so with the Stonex units in Cube A, you actually have profiles. So instead of going in and changing uh, your settings, like for uh, your base settings, you just have these profiles that you can save. Open them up, boom, everything is saved, and uh, it makes it easy peasy. A little bit different workflow from the Emlid, but it is still easy and very easy to use. So I have opened up the Cube A. I'm going to go to device and I'm going to go to communication because uh, this was already on. It's been connected to it in the past. I actually flew earlier today. So it automatically connected to it. So we don't have to worry about any connection stuff. What I do want to do is I'm going to go to working mode. When I'm on a control point, I want to stake it out first just to make sure that I'm where I'm supposed to be. That everything kind of matches up. So I'm going to change this into, we're in base mode right now. So the last time I used I was in base mode. What I want to do is I'm going to stop recording because it was recording a, uh, the log file. So boop, there, now I'm going to go into my saved configurations. I am going, you see I got all these profiles. Some of these I actually need to clean up. But I am going to go into rover mode using Mississippi RTK network, okay? So I'm going to do okay. It's going to kick over. It'll put it in rover mode. I'll be getting RTK from the state of Mississippi. So instead of it then just being, quote, single mode, it, it should then go into RTK mode. And in quick order, it'll actually go to a fix, right? So you see we've got a fix. So now I'm going to go out. I'm going to go to survey. And actually, so my project is... Um, I'm opened up. This is the very same project that I shot when I did the L2 day one, uh, day two or uh, episode one. Episode two should release tonight or tomorrow, so going to be very good stuff. So be sure and watch that one. But uh, you can see at the very top of my screen it says project. It tells you what project you have open. That is the right one. So I'm going to go to survey. I want to do a point stake out. And I do know this is occupying base one. So I'm going to click on base one and we'll hit OK. And voila, we're, I'm within three thousandths. Uh, I'm within eight, nine hundredths on the left and right. Anyway, we are correct. 
but I am going to assume the coordinates that are actually in, let's shut that off, sorry. Um, so we're going to assume the coordinates that are already been established, right? So now I'm ready to go back into base mode. I have confirmed that I'm on the right point, everything matched up, we're all good there. So now I'm gonna go back to device. I'm gonna go back to working mode. Again, I'm gonna stop the recording. I always do that. I, honestly, I don't know if that is an absolute uh, requirement, but I always do it. So now I wanna go down and we're gonna to go to base and I'm gonna to go to base where it is outputting to, to the MLED caster. So up here I say I have one called this uh, S980 base MLED 477. So now I'm gonna click on OK. It's now gonna switch the Stone X980 over to base mode and it's gonna get it set up for uploading corrections to the MLED caster. And then we will connect to the RS3 so that I can show you that the RS3 now has a, a fix as well and it'll have a, should have about a three foot baseline when we do that. So again, you guys, if you, if you don't have Stone X, maybe you've got, uh, you've got the Trimble, the R10 and R12, and you can output any, any unit that you can use to output to any RTK service, you can use that as a base. To the Emlid, then you could have your Emlid units as a rover because Emlid Caster supports having 10 rovers. One of them can be the RS3, another one can be your uh, DJI or any drone controller. So the Emlid Caster service permits all of that to happen, okay? Um, now let's go to let's go to rover and our antenna height is already set correctly so we're good there i'm sorry base i want to go to base i'm going to set my antenna height and one second it is 6.177 feet okay 6.177 hit okay and then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna say select base coordinates. And we wanna select it from an existing point. So I'm gonna do that. It's base number one is what I'm assuming, right? Those are the coordinates, I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna hit okay. Oops, we're gonna, I'm gonna hit stop because now I want to, now that I've assumed the new coordinates, now I want to start uh, outputting. This start at the bottom is whether you are outputting corrections or not. You can be, quote, connected to the caster service, but this down at the bottom is whether or not you're actually outputting corrections. And so now we want to do that. So I'm gonna do output or start. Okay. All right, now I don't even know if you could hear it, the RS3 just immediately went to fix. So as soon as we started outputting this, boom, it was, uh, it was doing that. So, or it went to fix, it did that. Um, that's it, man, we are, we are good. So what I wanna do now is we're done with the base, okay? So we're recording on my phone and I'm gonna connect to the RS3. So I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna go to Emlid Flow and I'm gonna to connect to the RS3. And you look up in the top right hand corner, it says status is a fix, right? So uh, let's go to status. Baseline 0.812 meters. And that's exactly what it should be because we're only from there to there, right? So matter of fact, we can All right, boom. Okay, so there's that. So you know this is working. Now what I wanna do is we're gonna connect our, let's power the drone on. So we'll let the let that, the Mavic 3E get powered up. Okay, we're gonna go into our camera view. Uh, let's make sure I have internet, yes. I am connected to the jetpack, that's good. Now we're going to go, oops, sorry, we're going to go into RTK. And we have, of course, with the Mavic 3E, 
you can have five configurations as you can on the M350. Um, we're going to go to Emlid Caster. So you can see in this list, this is um, configuration number one. So when I do that, it immediately says converging, and in pretty quick order, it should go to a fix, and it just did. So there we are. Man, it is, this is connected. This works so very nice. Um, and just like the, the, the Emlid units, you can also do what's called local entrap on the Stone X units. So I'll do a separate video, and I'll probably just run through the various setups that you would do for that. But I just wanted to show this one to show you can do this very easily and it works very well, free of charge. So if you guys, if you're looking for some additional units, then go to dronemappingtools.com. We carry both the, the Emlid RS units and the Stonex units, very good units. And you can do interrupt RTK on them, free of charge. So that's it. I hope this has been helpful. If it is, give me a thumbs up. Man, we've got good, good stuff coming out. I'm gonna keep pumping out videos on LiDAR, on the L2, on the Recipe units from Inertial Labs. We're gonna be doing more, a lot more detailed videos on the Stonex units to show you what those are capable of. I'm gonna be doing videos on the RS3s and man, we just, we've got Field Genius. I'm gonna show you using Field Genius with the RS3 units and RS2 Plus. Very good stuff. So man, I hope you like the material I'm putting out. I hope you find it helpful. I'm not here just sitting here trying to advertise stuff. I am trying to show you things that I use in my business. If I cannot use it on a regular basis in my own LiDAR and photogrammetry business, I'm not gonna sell it. I gotta be able to use it, swear by it, and want to use it in order to, to show it to you guys, show you what it's capable of, and put it on our website. I do not sell stuff I would not use. That's just, that's the bottom line, okay? So I hope it's helpful. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe. We're getting close to 6,000, so someday soon we'll go to seven, then eight, then 10, and maybe on to 50, I don't know. So we'll just, we'll see where we go. See you in the next video.